Um, good. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is a, a joint work with uh, uh, Jonathan Gordon, who is a, a master's student here at Cambridge, and uh, this talk is mainly about uh, his contributions for his uh, master thesis. I'm going to start with some uh, brief uh, uh, motivation from the point of view of uh, deep learning. Uh, we have seen that uh, deep learning has become a very successful uh, technology in the uh, recent years. It has achieved uh, big achievements in uh, different areas, uh, such as computer vision, speech recognition, natural language processing, computer games, uh, and so on. Despite uh, these uh, successes, uh, deep learning still has, however, some uh, limitations, which I'm going to and in this talk, I'm going to focus on some of these uh, limitations. The first one is that deep learning is a very data-hungry uh, technology. It requires a lot of uh, data to obtain uh, accurate predictions in practice. And uh, for example, to build uh, real-world applications, we will, may need a lot of uh, labeled examples uh, consisting of uh, inputs uh, and outputs uh, that we use to train uh, these uh, neural networks. This is one of the disadvantages of this deep learning. Another one is that uh, it, uh, in general, it often fails uh, to produce uh, estimates of uncertainty in uh, the predictions. And this is, is uh, particularly significant uh, when these methods uh, make predictions, for example, in data instances that are very different from the ones uh, used to, to train uh, these methods. Um, in those cases, uh, we would like, ideally, uh, these methods to produce uh, uh, uncertainty estimates uh, telling us that, uh, for example, in uh, some uh, regions of the space, they are not able to make uh, accurate predictions. And that would allow us, for example, to take better actions. You could imagine that that's very useful, for example, in a self-driving car that uh, would uh, need to face a situation that has not seen before. This failure of these uh, techniques is illustrated in uh, this example. Here we see the predictions made by a deep learning system that tries to generate a caption description of an image. And uh, we see that in these examples, it performs uh, very well, uh, producing very good uh, uh, descriptions. However, when we uh, feed an, uh, to, to this uh, system as input uh, an image that has not seen uh, before, then the predictions in this setting uh, can be very far from the correct uh, ones. So ideally, we'd like to, uh, these systems to produce estimates of uncertainty so that they can identify these uh, situations and we can make uh, better decisions in these cases. So in this talk, we try to address these uh, two issues, two issues of uh, deep learning, uh, that they require a lot of uh, data, and also that they, they fail to produce these estimates uh, of uncertainty. And for that, we uh, are going to use uh, two different uh, techniques to address these issues. The first one is going to be semi-supervised uh, learning methods. Uh, these techniques will allow, allow us to use only a small number of uh, labeled examples uh, to still obtain uh, good predictive accuracy with uh, deep learning methods by exploiting uh, large amounts of unlabeled data. That is uh, usually cheaper to obtain than uh, labeled data. We are going, going to use also Bayesian machine learning techniques to produce uh, estimates of uncertainty in the predictions of these uh, techniques. I'm going to describe briefly these uh, two areas uh, of machine learning. So in supervised, semi-supervised learning, uh, the idea is uh, to reduce the data hunger of uh, deep le learning by uh, exploiting uh, dependencies between uh, the labeling process and the distribution of the unlabeled data. This is going to be useful when we have uh, large amounts of unlabeled data and only a few uh, labeled uh, instances. Uh, you can imagine, for example, in uh, medical applications, you may have uh, doctors or experts that have to label, for example, medical images, and that's uh, very expensive. You may only have a few labeled instances, but maybe you have uh, large amounts of unlabeled data. So semi-supervised learning can be used to address uh, this uh, scenario and produce gains in predictive performance. And this is illustrated by this example, uh, which I borrowed from uh, Subin Garamani. Um, you can imagine that the input uh, features to your deep learning system are like these ones uh, shown in this uh, uh, figure. They are uh, two-dimensional uh, points. And you may have only a few uh, labeled examples. So most of the examples are unlabeled, shown as black dots but only a few of them are labeled. And uh, you can uh, try to infer uh, dependencies between uh, the structure of the unlabeled data and the labels. And we see that this cluster in the bottom seems to have uh, blue labels, uh, and this cluster in the top seems to have uh, red uh, labels. We can uh, exploit this uh, structure to, type, to make uh, better predictions. For example, for a new data point uh, that uh, could be in this area, we could uh, infer that the, the correct class could be uh, red. So these semi-supervised learning techniques, they will uh, be able to exploit this uh, structure to make uh, uh, improved predictions with a few uh, labeled uh, examples. 
uh, in general, these te techniques uh, to work, uh, we need, uh, for these techniques to work, we need to have a structure in the input space. I showed in the previous example that we had these two clusters. Uh, so in general, uh, these techniques will be successful when there's uh, this type of a structure in the uh, unlabeled data that can be exploited. And uh, this type of a structure appears in practice across many different uh, types of data. For example, in real world images, we have this type of a structure. We could think of uh, molecules. If we want to predict the properties of molecules, we also have similar types of structures. Time series also, if we want to predict properties of time series, and even uh, for natural language, if we want to predict the uh, properties of some uh, uh, text, for example. So uh, these techniques, uh, semi-supervised learning methods, will allow us to reduce uh, the data hunger of uh, deep learning. And the Bayesian machine learning methods will allow us to uh, obtain uh, uh, reliable estimates uh, of uh, uncertainty. Uh, Bayesian machine learning is uh, a principled framework for making uh, predictions from data with, that will allow us to obtain these uh, estimates of uncertainty in, the pre in our predictions. This uh, framework works by combining two key elements, which are probabilistic models uh, and uh, inference algorithms. The probabilistic model is going to be a recipe that is going to explain how the data is actually generated. And it's going to uh, have some parameters, uh, which we are going to denote theta, that specify the type of patterns and regularities that we expect to find in the data. Uh, this probabilistic model is just a probability distribution from which we assume that the data is sampled from. And the same inference algorithm can then combine the model and the data to make predictions about some quantities of interest. And the, an advantage of uh, Bayesian machine learning is that instead of obtaining point estimates for, uh, in our predictions, we're going to obtain a, a predictive distribution that can be used to quantify uncertainty. For example, here we have different data points, and we see that for each input, the predictions of a Bayesian method is a probability distribution which uh, can be used to quantify uncertainty, for example, by the spread of this distribution around, for example, its uh, mean. So uh, all this is implemented in practice using a, a probability theory and Bayes rule. Bayes rule is going to be used to obtain a posterior distribution for the parameters of the model given the data. And then uh, this posterior distribution represents uh, our uncertainty about uh, which possible values of the model parameters could have actually generated the data given our modeling assumptions. To make predictions, the key difference between uh, machine learning, Bayesian machine learning and other uh, techniques is that uh, instead of considering a single value of the model parameters uh, theta to make predictions, the model for a particular value of theta, it can on its own uh, make predictions. But instead of considering a single value, uh, for example, the maximizer of this posterior, the maximum a posteriori value of uh, theta, Instead of considering a single point value for theta, we are going to integrate with respect to this posterior distribution. We are going to consider all the possible values of the model parameters, each one weighted by its uh, posterior uh, distribution. And by doing so, we will obtain a reliable estimates uh, of uncertainty. This is illustrated in this example, and uh, we can see how these methods can be, Bayesian methods can be useful to obtain uh, uh, robust estimates of uncertainty, for example, in regions far from the training data. We can have uh, this uh, uh, linear classification example. Here we have two data sets, and we can just find the maximum a posteriori uh, value of the model parameters. This, uh, the parameters in this case are the coefficients of this uh, uh, separating hyperplane. And this could be the predictions made by the uh, map uh, estimate of our model. But we see that the predictions, when we are far from the data, for example, in this region and this other region, they are overly confident. Uh, in this case, for example, in these regions, we are predicting with high probability one class or the other, and uh, in general, our uncertainty should be higher. Uh, we can see that Bayesian methods uh, actually uh, address this problem uh, successfully, and this is illustrated as follows. Bayesian methods, instead of considering a single value of the model parameters, take into account that the, the uh, other values could also describe the data well. For example, this one, or this one, or this one also. There are many values that describe the data well. And in general, uh, Bayesian methods are going to average across all the different uh, possible values of the model parameters, weighting each one by how well they describe the data. There, when you average all these predictions, you have a predictive distribution that has, for example, higher uncertainty in regions uh, of the data that are uh, far from the training set. And this uh, can produce uh, robust estimates uh, of uncertainty. So our contributions uh, consist in including this type of uh, 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 uncertainty estimation uh, into these uh, uh, methods for semi-parametric uh, 
a semi-supervised learning with uh, uh, deep neural networks. So we are going to combine uh, deep learning uh, with Bayesian machine learning and semi-supervised learning to obtain novel uh, models and uh, algorithms for data efficient uh, deep learning that produce uh, uh, accurate estimates of uncertainty. Before describing these contributions, I'm going to mention briefly some uh, of the work already existing that uh, combines uh, deep learning with semi-supervised learning but doesn't produce these estimates of uncertainty. So there is this missing component here that introduces uh, Bayesian uncertainty in, in the predictions. Uh, probably the most uh, uh, promising methods uh, already existing for uh, semi-supervised learning that uh, also use deep learning techniques are based on variational autoencoders. Ryan already described uh, these techniques uh, recently. They are very successful. And uh, the idea is that uh, these models assume that the data, uh, for example, the unlabeled uh, data x is generated as a function of some uh, uh, latent variables that introduce a, a structure into the distribution of this uh, unlabeled data. We also have a connection between uh, the class labels uh, affecting the distribution of the observed uh, unlabeled data. So the, uh, the, this, this connection in the model introduces dependencies between the labels and the uh, unlabeled data. And uh, uh, by using this connection, we can uh, exploit uh, this uh, semi-supervised uh, semi -supervised, uh, data structure. So arrows here are just uh, probability distributions encoded using neural networks. And these models, they uh, learn the model parameters, the parameters of this uh, uh, probability distribution encoded using neural networks using a lower bound to the likelihood. This is similar to what uh, the technique that Ryan uh, described before. Uh, you have to integrate out the latent variables uh, set and the missing uh, target variables y for the unlabeled data. And you do that using some uh, recognition networks. Uh, that uh, allow us to optimize a lower bound on the likelihood. So we can uh, use these techniques to learn these models. And they actually perform uh, very well in practice. In fact, with a small modification, which is called, uh, which is based on introducing some auxiliary variables, I'm not going to describe this in, data, in detail, but by introducing some auxiliary variables, this type of models obtain uh, almost uh, probably the, the current state of the art uh, results when uh, solving semi-supervised uh, learning problems. These are very uh, successful uh, techniques, but I still have some uh, limitations. And one of the main limitations is that uh, to make predictions, we have to use the recognition networks. If you see, there is no direct connection between x uh, and y. And the same occurs in the previous model. There is no direct connection between x and y, which means that we, can actually, we cannot use these models for making predictions. So predictions are actually used by the recognition networks. We need to use these recognition networks made the latent variables as a function of the data. Because of this reason, it's going to be very challenging to obtain accurate estimates uh, of uncertainty with these models. Uh, and in fact, uh, we won't be able to obtain reliable estimates of uncertainty. So uh, in this uh, work, we address this issue uh, by proposing uh, uh, novel methods. Um, we can see here in this example that uh, how these methods fail to produce uh, estimates of uncertainty. This is a toy data set with uh, two different uh, clusters of data points, each one labeled with a different class. We have the red class and the blue class. We can see how just uh, uh, standard uh, deep learning methods that uh, are, have available only a limited number of labeled data, which is shown here as black points. The black points are the only data points that are labeled and all the other data points are labeled. If we just uh, use the labeled data, uh, traditional deep learning methods are going to perform very poorly in this case. They are going to overfit significantly. <laughs> we see here that this model has zero prediction error. It predicts these two data points are red, all these three data points are blue, and this one is red. Uh, and it performs uh, very poorly on all the other data points that are different from the uh, ones labeled in the training data. The semi-supervised variational autoencoder is uh, doing a much better job uh, but as we see here, it, it still uh, suffers from uh, the accurate estimation of uncertainty. In these regions, for example, there is no data. And uh, uh, ideally, we would like uh, to have a higher uh, estimates of uncertainty in our predictions. We would like our predictions to be not so overly confident in, this, uh, in these regions. And we are going to describe some techniques that will allow uh, us to do so. So what we are going to do is to combine these techniques uh, with some uh, Bayesian approach. Uh, that is going to estimate a posterior distribution over the model parameters 
and uh, integrate with respect to that distribution when making predictions. So uh, what we propose is to change the model. Before, we had a direct connection uh, from uh, Y to X, and uh, that's why we couldn't make predictions. So we changed the model now, and we have just that uh, Y is generated as a function of X. So we have actually a function that maps X to Y, and we can use this uh, for making predictions. We can also have some latent variables uh, said that introduce dependencies between the uh, unlabeled data and the labeled data, and they can be exploited for uh, semi-supervised uh, learning. So uh, we can now use our model for making predictions because we changed the uh, direction of this uh, uh, connection. We can now learn a posterior distribution over the model parameters uh, theta, uh, and we can integrate over that posterior distribution to make uh, predictions. Uh, we can train this model optimizing a lower bound on the likelihood function. Uh, this is similar uh, to the techniques that Ryan described before. I won't go into details here. The main difference is that now, uh, with respect to previous uh, variational autoencoder methods, is that we now integrate our lower bound with respect to our variational distribution on the model parameters to take into account uncertainty over those parameters. And we are learning this uh, variational uh, distribution by optimizing this lower bound. One key difference is uh, to make predictions. Before, predictions were made using these uh, recognition networks. Uh, now we can actually use the model to make predictions. So we can, for a new input uh, uh, data point x star, we can uh, sample from the model uh, y star and use those samples to make predictions. This is still one thing. We need these uh, latent variables uh, set to make predictions, and we don't have those available. However, we can generate them with our recognition network. In this case, the recognition network, again, requires Y as an input, but we can actually uh, iterate this process in which we sample uh, first uh, Y, maybe from initially from a recognition network, and then we just uh, sample the latent variables from the second recognition network, and then uh, the uh, class labels, again, from the model. And we iterate this process uh, for a few iterations. In our case, we use uh, 10 uh, steps. We can see how it does in the previous example. These were the previous methods that I described. And uh, we can see that when we look at the predictions uh, of our model, we obtain uh, higher uh, estimates of uncertainty in these regions for which uh, we don't have data, which is uh, uh, what we were interested in uh, initially. So this is great. We can also look at the uh, predictive accuracy of these models in this uh, toy data set. And uh, we see that we obtain uh, significant gains, both in predictive accuracy and uh, predictive log likelihood by using uh, this type of techniques. Uh, we obtain also gains with a non-Bayesian version of our method. We can just uh, focus on uh, learning point estimates of the model parameters, and we still do slightly better than the previous techniques. And when we introduce uncertainty in our model parameters, we do better. This is good. We also tested this on more uh, challenging uh, data sets. Uh, for example, on the MNIST uh, data set, where the goal is to uh, classify different uh, handwritten uh, digits. And in this case, uh, the results are not uh, that great. We are still working on these techniques. Uh, this is uh, ongoing work. Uh, we still get gains in a predictive log likelihood, but only when we uh, use our full Bayesian approach. And uh, when we use just point estimates, our model is not improving over previous uh, techniques, which uh, means that uh, we should uh, still work on uh, uh, these models to try to improve uh, their performance. There are still some uh, issues. Uh, we are not able, when we don't take into account uncertainty, we are not able to outperform previous approaches. We also found some convergence problems with uh, 10 labels per class. And uh, we didn't compare with these models that use additive uh, uh, auxiliary variables, which are currently the state of the art. Uh, those, uh, those techniques uh, still perform better than our proposal, but we could also introduce auxiliary variables into our uh, models, and uh, we would expect the uh, performance to improve as well. So just uh, to conclude, uh, some take-home message. Uh, in this talk, uh, we have described some uh, novel Bayesian approach for generative models for these uh, semi-supervised variational autoencoders. It's the first Bayesian approach to this uh, type of models. It allows us to obtain uh, uncertainty estimates in the predictions, which previous models couldn't produce. Uh, and we have observed that they produce uh, better predictive distributions than uh, similar models. At future work, we propose to introduce uh, auxiliary variables to introduce the performance of our uh, methods to make them comparable to state-of-the-art techniques. And we propose also to apply these techniques to uh, different uh, tasks in which uh, 
making use of these uh, reliable estimates of uncertainty is useful, such as in Bayesian optimization and in active learning uh, tasks. Uh, thanks a lot for your, uh, for your attention, and I will be very happy to answer any questions. <laughs>